The year's 2007. Trials are taking place for a new special operations combat rifle. It's got a short stroke piston driven design. It's by FN. It can be fired from a closed stock. It's superior in every way, except it just didn't add up and was not selected. This, on the other hand, was, but why is it perhaps maybe your favorite, but not the military's favorite? Let's talk about the FN SCAR. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about everybody's favorite rifles. Right? The SCAR? The Special Operations Forces Combat Assault Rifle? Isn't that everybody's favorite? Or at least, it's what I keep being told, I don't freaking know. Now the SCAR. If it's your favorite, why isn't it the United States military though? Why have they chosen to kind of abandon it, if you will? So let's just talk about it really quick because we're going to talk about the one that I've got here in front of me first, the SCAR-16 or the SCAR-L. This is the lightweight model chambered in 5.56. Why was it the only one out of the Mark 17 and the Mark 20 that was actually never formally adopted by the Special Operations Forces? That's the name, Special Operations Forces Combat Assault Rifle. Well, I think there was actually a couple of issues that were run into. First of all, cost. The cost of this far outweighs the cost of an M4 or M16. So therefore, it's, well, capabilities and features must justify that cost. And where did it fail? Reliability, which is like a really big issue, if you ask me. Because in a combat situation, you probably want your gun to go bang when it's supposed to. And one of the reasons it didn't go bang is for the number one feature that everybody loves to hate, the reciprocating charging handle, which this model, thankfully the newer model has a non-reciprocating charging handle on it. For those of you that don't know what that is, well, if you've seen an M1 Garand, an M14, an AK for instance, where the charging handle is actually connected to the bolt carrier group, every time you pull the trigger, this moves back and forth. It has a decently short length of travel and it sticks out a little bit here that you see and it's actually in a position that, well, I've never had an issue with it catching my support hand or anything like that. So, okay, that makes sense. Ergonomic enough for most riflemen or those shooting it. Enter the SCAR. Apparently, the reciprocating charging handle is actually by request by people who most definitely don't shoot for a living. Uh, they probably are overpaid and in positions of office that they need to be voted out of or were put there by somebody that was voted in. Either way, they did wrong by requesting a reciprocating charging handle. Why did they request a reciprocating charging handle on a special operations, more modern combat rifle? Because, rumored, because the AK has a reciprocating charging handle and it's notorious for its reliability. So therefore a reciprocating charging handle must mean that's why that rifle is reliable. Okay. You know that Adam Sandler movie where everyone is now dumber because of what you just said? That's kind of what I'm feeling right now. Anyway, all right. That's only a rumor though, right? People in those high up positions wouldn't be that stupid, right? Because here's the issue with a reciprocating charging handle. For one, look at the placement on the SCAR. First of all, let's actually grab a gun that has a reciprocating charging handle. Its positioning isn't any different, but I do want to show you guys, here's the SCAR 17 we'll talk about in just a moment. This does have a reciprocating charging handle. Now what's neat is you can at least decide which side the charging handle is going to go on. I opt for the right hand side. If I'm going to be shooting one of these that has the charging handle that moves back and forth, then I'm going to want it to be on the right side. It's more, put it this way, I'm more used to firearms that have a reciprocating charging handle on that side. Again, the aforementioned guns that we talked about before, the M14, the M1 Grand, the AK, it's on this side. It's easy enough for me to lock and load, like, just like that, right? How about it? Man, that's loud. Okay, you'll also notice the placement here, for me on the right side is better because if you're running an optic on your scar, it is a knuckle buster. It is, I have literal scars on my knuckles. I just 
scars giving me scars. Um, a little literal scars on my knuckles from having it on the left hand or right hand side and I go to rack it and cut myself on EOTEX. The model's the standard XPS, not the EXPS with the uh, the uh, hydro, the taller hydro board. What was that? The riser. The riser, thank you. Those models that just have the jagged edge here that sit down on the rifle more, those ones cut me up every time. I've posted to my stories, all of that. Um, <laughs> showing bloody knuckles and stuff and be like, oh, you can always tell when I'm shooting a scar. Well, I put it on the opposite side. I don't have that problem as much. Still have the problem on occasion. All right, even the models that don't have the reciprocating charging handle, I still have that issue with. So the placement of the charging handle is just crap, okay? Now let's talk about if this has to move freely back and forth every time you pull the trigger for it to reliably shoot, that means if your positioning of this is here and your thumb is up here getting decapitated by the charging handle, you're doing some weird shoots or you're even on the other hand, whatever type of position you have, if you start shooting right now, this charging handle is gonna come back, wreck your thumb, and then it's also gonna prevent the operation of the firearm. Or let's say a much more feasible situation is you're shooting next to a barricade, a wall, a barrier, whatever it might be, and it gets snagged on something or it gets snagged on your gear. Believe me, I've seen some jacked up dudes before, just, you know, straps all over the place and everything else, right? It's a lot better to have less or fewer moving parts. It's just better that way. And FN, the manufacturer that makes the SCAR, they did it right once before. Actually, they did it right several decades before with the FAL. Notice, first of all, the charging handle on this one. They do have models that actually stick out, but this one does fold forward. So now it's not gonna get caught on your gear or anything else, which is nice. And on top of that, it doesn't move back and forth in order for the gun to operate. It can stay right in that position as the bolt goes forward and back and forth. That's awesome, great. You'll also notice on models, if this was on the left-hand side, even still, like you see on the SCAR-16 here, if I just do a quick reload, I come up, I've got the gun here, and then I go to put my hand back on the grip. If I don't intentionally come out, right, so having to do extra movement, having to think about this in probably a stressful situation if you're getting shot at, I'm getting caught on the charging handle. If this was the reciprocating model and I need to send rounds down quick, now I've got myself in a really bad situation where I'm gonna get one round off, hopefully, and, well, probably my thumb jacked up too. Obviously, whoever thought the reciprocating charging handle was a good idea doesn't shoot for a living and you suck. All right, continuing on. <laughs> Thankfully, FN did fix it many years later. What were some other issues though? Not so much about the SCAR-17, but about the 16 or the SCAR-L. Well, those were liability issues I was talking about. It got to the point where it has quite a bit of free space up here. This is utilizing a much more different design, different operating system than the M16 or M4 is. It does have a neat system, the short stroke piston driven system, which is nice, reliable, runs great, cool. It's an adjustable system, which is another neat factor. So that way it can run in different types of environments and which it would run fine. But if you're, you know, really dirty, whatever else, need to turn up the gas, turn down the gas, whatever you want to do, you can do that, which is nice. However, it's a completely different design and the magazines that it came with are fine. They're a little bit different than the standard GI mags. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, so a lot of guys didn't really like that, but that's not too big of a deal. The issue came with, well, if you're getting issued this and it takes your already standard issue GI M4 M16 mags, and I've got hundreds of those laying around, I'm gonna go grab those and take them into combat. Well, the issue that they found was those magazines being used and abused that they were, the feed lips on them that you see right up here, the feed lips would get worn, uh, followers would get worn, and one thing that would happen, especially when the feed lips would get worn, as those start to open up, there's nothing there to actually really capture the rounds anymore, so they wouldn't have as much tension as they used to, so these rounds would now start to double feed, triple feed, or just get caught in the op-rod section or the op-rod chamber of the SCAR-16. That's not good. <laughs> you want your rounds in your mag and in your chamber and on the ground after they're done being extracted. You don't want them 
in the operating system of the gun, and that was something that happened quite a bit, which again, could cause some serious reliability issues. And the only way to clear those once they get caught up in here is to disassemble the gun. And again, in a combat situation, I don't want to have to field strip my firearm in order to clear what could be a basic malfunction. A double feed is a very simple thing to clear as long as you've practiced it and know what you're doing. The moment that your firearm, the machinery there that is ultimately there to, you know, well, stop the bad guy is working against you, uh, it's not a good day. So there's that. Let's talk about one other feature, not as big of a feature that caused a no-go on the Mark 16, uh, was the stock. Good thing FALs are tough. Anyway, the stock itself is side folding, which is a very neat thing and is a reason why the SCAR 16 wasn't a hard no, uh, but it was a soft no. What I mean by that is they still sent a couple of these, not a whole lot, and more than a couple, like maybe a few hundred, if that, downrange or overseas to be used as a personal defense weapon. Because unlike the M4 or M16, uh, this can be shot with the stock missing, right? The M4 M16 utilizes a buffer system which has to be there in order for the gun to operate. If it's not there, <laughs> the gun's not gonna work. That's all there is to it. I can fire this gun with the stock folded, and if you put the shorter barrel on it, whether it be the 12.5, 14.5, whatever, you've got a really nice condensed package that's gonna allow you to have adequate firepower of the 5.56 cartridge in a close quarter situation. Again, a great personal defense weapon that some people that needed that more low visibility in a bag or on your person, more maneuverable in a vehicle, whatever it might be, that was a great option. It wasn't you know, a standard issue for special operators though uh, because of the aforementioned issues and also the stock itself initially, this button right here, um, now on the new ones has a lot of tension and works really, really well. However, originally that wasn't the case. It did have issues where if you were running through the woods or whatever else it might be and this thing came up and slapped up against you, the stock would just fold on over. So it wasn't really a tough latching system and it caused for some issues. So you don't wanna be in a situation where your stock isn't where it should be if you need to come up and shoulder it to get accurate shots on target. If it's just, you know, flopping in the wind like this, uh, <laughs> that's, that's not good. Cool. So there were a couple of issues on that front. Also, they did notice too that the gun got hotter, faster than the M4 or M16. Again, is it a huge deal? No, but if you are putting a lot of rounds down range, especially in a full auto rate of fire, uh, that could become problematic very quickly, depending on how many rounds you're throwing down range. So all of that being said, and again, the cost, getting back to it, the cost just didn't outweigh all the problems the gun had to make it worth replacing the M4 or M16 for special operations utilization. Granted, they did say it's modular, which is cool. You can swap out the barrel and put in a different caliber, different barrel length, whatever. That's awesome, that's great. The only problem with that though is, well, you have to replace the barrel. You're not replacing the whole receiver. Therefore, you need to re-zero whatever optics you are running. So if I wanted to go close quarters with this and throw on a much shorter barrel compared to the 16 inch, all right, cool, let's throw on the 12.5, great. Let's go hit the range. What's the likelihood of that actually staying zeroed to the optics that I had zero for my 16 inch? Probably not likely. So now you gotta go re-zero that before you take it to the range. Grab your M4, throw on a 10.3 inch, make it a Mark 18, whatever, great. Now all you've done is pop two pins, put on your upper receiver that probably already has the optics on it that you're gonna run with it anyway that are zeroed to that barrel, you're all set. Need to go a little bit further out, wanna make it an SPR, run to Mark 12 setup, great. Pop two pins, throw on that upper receiver with your magnified optic, go hit the range, go kill some bad guys. Okay, cool. You don't really have that capability with the scar in that sense. There are also just some other really nitpicky items. For instance, if you're shooting southpaw or you're a left-handed shooter, this little piece on the stock, which is still being utilized today, would rub raw, especially if you're shooting a, hundred, a lot of rounds. For me, I could see that, but it's not really all that big of a deal. Uh, I, I, for me, at least. I can see where a lot of people that might cause some problems. 
but that was something that was complained about. So those were a lot of the features that kind of made this a no-go to be a standard issue special operations rifle. The Mark 17, however, was selected and didn't have a lot of these issues. It being chambered in 7.62 NATO, you'll notice, well, has larger components, larger internals, larger magazines, larger rounds that it's shooting. And so those rounds that were ha causing triple feeds, those rounds that were getting caught in the op-rod system, wasn't a case. Could it be the magazines? Completely different magazines, a whole new redesign of magazines. So they were all getting issued newer mags instead of the old beat up GI mags that the SCAR-16 could take? Maybe, but at the end of the day, the SCAR-17 shooting 7.62 NATO doesn't have that issue. Big around, less area for it to get caught up in. Simple math if you ask me. But at the end of it all, the SCAR-17 also wasn't a huge favorite. Uh, the ergonomics behind the gun, hey, it feels fine. It has very similar AR controls, uh, but a lot of guys did complain about the ergonomics. Some guys even said, hey, um, it's cool that it has a ambi mag release, but as they would be on patrol, that button, which would protrude a little bit, even though it is protected by parts of the lower receiver, would still get hit and mag would be on the ground and a guy walking by would be like, what the hell, my mag is gone. So that's not good, right? And then it came down to just the overall feel of the gun while shooting. It's a lightweight battle rifle. It comes in at eight pounds. It, the gun has got a lot of polymer components to it. When shooting this without optics, without a grip, just iron sights, you'll notice really quick that well, first of all, it's ungodly loud. It's, it's uncomfortable to shoot. Uh, and on top of that, the recoil on it, it's it's noticeable. A lot more noticeable than a lot of other 7.62 NATO chambered rifles that are out on the market and available. HK417 comes into play, right? Also, those are a little bit heavier. So there's pros and cons to that, right? Pro is not as much felt recoil. Negative, the con, it's, it's heavier, right? So what you'll notice is when shooting the SCAR-17 without any other types of funky uh, or you know fancy gizmos and gadgets is, well, you do get a little bit more muzzle rise and it's definitely a lot more felt recoil. Again, that makes it a little bit di more difficult for quicker follow-up shots and staying on target when needed. A lot, of, a lot of guys complained about that. Okay, cool, you throw on your EOTech and magnifier, your magnified optic, your vertical grip, maybe a suppressor, whatever else. Okay, cool, not as big of a deal anymore, but still kind of an issue. If you guys don't like shooting the guns that they're issued, then, well, they're probably not gonna be likely to choose that as their choice to go into combat with. Just saying. So the SCAR-17 has been around for quite some time, is still in limited service out there, as is the Mark 20, which is the precision rifle variation of the SCAR family. Initially, when it came out, it also had some reliability issues one of which would be really, really quick and unanticipated and unexpected uh, follow-up shots, like two or three rounds being sent for one trigger pull when you only meant to send one round. That's kind of a big deal. So why is it, you know, after they fix that, cool gun setup, it's nice and everything, still a heavy boy coming in at about 12 pounds without all the fancy stuff. It's a good precision rifle. But why is it that it seems like in the early 2020s, about 2018, 2019, uh, that the United States military and the special operations forces just kind of stopped? They didn't really, as far as I know, all out cancel the SCAR. They just stopped renewing contracts and buying them. Is, well, there's a couple of answers to that question, if you ask me. Again, cost. Cost, cost, cost is a big deal. If you're paying a lot of money for a rifle that ultimately a current serving rifle can do uh, or perform just as good, uh, then why would we spend the money on that? Makes sense if you ask me. Now all of a sudden you take a look at some of the SPRs that are in the game, you take a look at the M110. The M110 versus the SCAR or the Mark 20, it's kind of hard to justify the Mark 20 in that sense. The biggest thing that it really has on it is if you want to, you can you can utilize a side folding stock. You take away that 
then a lot of the features that you get of the SCAR 20 just really doesn't, I guess you could say financially, make sense if you're gonna compare that to a DI system that has been working for many, many years and is ultimately really familiar uh, with service members already. I mean, when you think about it alone, just the controls and the user interface, well, charging handle back here versus all the way up here, things like that, right? There you have it. So little things like that, I think, play a really big part. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about that, because one other thing that comes to mind is, well, maybe there's a new gun coming out that with a shorter barrel of about 13.9 inches and a suppressor, it's delivering perhaps arguably better performance in terminal ballistics at greater ranges uh, for a better manual of arms, a better felt recoil, better ergonomics, and is chambered in 6.8 by 51, otherwise known as 277 Fury on the civilian market, and is the Sig Spear. Mm. <laughs> now, of course, if cost is a factor, we're talking money there. But at the same time, they won the contract. The NGSW is out there and it's happening. So it seems to me as if once the SCAR, the Special Operations Forces Combat Assault Rifle, started to dwindle in popularity and effectiveness on the field in comparison to other firearms that are in much larger circulation in the United States military, but this new guy is coming out over here that looks really promising. Maybe we just put that to the side for now and see what our boys think of the NGSW. I don't know, it's just a thought on my, my head. Let me know what you guys think, again, down in the comment section below. For me, however, I can tell you this right now. I love the SCAR. <laughs> I really do. The SCAR 16, going back to this, thank you, Brandon from Texas Plinking, that made me ultimately try the SCAR-16 with a Huxworks Flow 5.56K silencer. That combination, even though you void the warranty, whatever, that combination was a dream to shoot. It was amazing. It felt so freaking good. And yeah, that was our first silencer giveaway also was with, with the Huxworks Flow 5.56K. And coupling that with the SCAR-16 made a wonderful suppressor host. It felt great, shot awesome. Go check out that video if you didn't see it, where we announced it as our giveaway. We had a lot of fun with that. Is that video up still even on YouTube? It's not on, anymore. Not I'll anymore. Yeah, what about Rumble? Is it on Rumble? Can soon. Soon, okay, cool. Well, you guys, if you missed that, just make sure you're following us on Rumble because YouTube was playing some pretty dumb games and we got like two strikes that were since wiped away and we thought we were gonna lose our channel and we're still here. Thought I couldn't take mags out of guns, but you know, so I mean, it's weird stuff. But anyway, absolute pleasure to shoot. The shooting this SCAR 17 suppressed, you'll notice I have a Huxworks muzzle device on this, is a little bit different. It kind of, the recoil impulse on it is strong. It feels you know, much more straight into you. If you're utilizing the standard brake that comes on the scars, it's at least directing those gases out to the side, keeps it a pretty level shooter for the most part. But you throw a silencer on it, well, it's different. I almost prefer shooting it with the brake and doubling up on hearing protection than just shooting it with a suppressor. Give and take. But anyway, the SCAR-20, on the other hand, I have not shot suppressed yet, but it does come with the Surefire two-chamber Pro Comp brake, which this is the flattest shooting in my mind. This SCAR, with its weight, with that brake, the heavier barrel just is phenomenal. And I'll go ahead and lead into our current giveaway, the SCAR-20 chambered in 7.62 NATO, as I've already started to talk about it. And just so you guys can go ahead and take a look at it for your viewing pleasure, Hopefully I don't knock down a bunch of other stuff off the wall. Boom. Starting at the muzzle end, yep, the Surefire Pro Comp that I've already talked about. 20 inch barrel, hence SCAR 20. We've also got on this the AccuTac Bipod, big beefy boy. Talked about this in our video announcing it, so if you want more in-depth details about it, go check that video out. Anyway, coming back a little bit further, you'll notice we do have the Tango Down vertical grip on it. Really big fan of that setup. Feels really good to me. I like it. If you don't, you can take it off. I don't care. You're not going to hurt my feelings. This is the non-reciprocating charging handle model, so that doesn't happen every time you pull the trigger. Thank God. Coming back, it does come with a 10-round magazine, but we're throwing in a 20-round mag in addition to the 10-round because we're, we're not going to do that to you. 
<laughs> Unless you're in a state that doesn't allow 20 round mags, then we'll keep the 20 round mag. Okay, cool. Which by the way, good time to caveat. If you are hesitant to enter our giveaways because you live in a state that wouldn't allow you to own such awesome rifles that you see like this, that's okay. Well, it's not okay that that's a thing, but it's okay that you live there because we will work with each of our winners. Uh, we've done it in the past where we will get you something of equal or lesser value, not lesser value, of equal value, uh, or we'll simply give you store credit, whatever. It doesn't matter, we'll work with you. We'll get you a, a compliant model if that's offered whatever, our winners still win, even if you're not in a winning state. Okay, cool. On top, probably one of my favorite optics to date, the Leupold Mark V HD 3.6 to 18 by 44 optic, first focal plane, TMR reticle. This, this optic is just awesome. Clear glass, the reticle is awesome. I just like it a lot. Uh, you'll also notice it is on one of my favorite mounts, the spur mount. This is a really beefy mount that, I don't know, it fits, it fits the aesthetic of the gun, looks good for this optic, and on top of that, it is, it, it might be too much for most people, but you're not gonna break this optic. It's not too much for me, it's exactly what I want, so you're getting that. Cool, Super Scar Trigger by Geisley. Again, the Scar 20 is the precision model. This model is the one that's supposed to be the, the sniper rifle of the SCAR family, right? So this has a really, really nice two-stage trigger, really lightweight, we're talking like two to three pounds, feels awesome, able to get those really quick follow-up shots on it, partly due to its weight, which helps with felt recoil, and that break, which additionally helps that recoil. So just awesome gun. You have a fixed stock, not side folding in this case, but it does have an adjustable comb height and length of pull. All in all, fantastic rifle that you are getting at no cost. So head on over to cfcontest.com or classicfirearms.com to get your entries in on my favorite of the SCARs, the SCAR 20. Ironic that I haven't shot this one suppressed yet. We also have a 6.5 Creedmoor model that we're gonna save for a later giveaway, wink, wink. Um, maybe we'll shoot that one suppressed. I would like to shoot this one suppressed though. Maybe we'll... We, we, we probably should, right? I mean, yeah. the giveaways are two weeks, right? We got two weeks to play with this? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, and if the and if the giveaway winner takes a little bit of time to get back to us, I'm gonna shoot your gun more. It's gonna get more dirty. You're just gonna have to, you know, not wait on the paperwork. Anyway, we'll leave it off there. Utilize the code word, since it's, this is the precision scar, utilize the code word precise to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. And, uh, yeah, classicfirearms.com, CF, cfcontest.com. Don't forget to refer your friends and family, guys. And as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. I'll see you down in the comment section below all about scars. And where do you think they, where do you think they belong? Like in a dumpster, in your collection, in the military, in the military arms arsenal? <laughs> Definitely in the military arms channel. Uh, just let us know what your thoughts are down below. And also, if you are one of those operators that, you know, had some time and experience uh, with these systems, let us know what your thoughts were whenever you utilized it down below. Guys, we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com. God bless.